Well, Happy New Year from all of us at Trevor Sports and welcome once again to that weekly Premier League fix of Match of the Day. folks a bit later than planned but you know what better late than never i'll tell you what though despite everything that's going on in the real world in the world of trevor sports some exciting times ahead and tonight we've got two fantastic games to bring you we start off with the big one between chelsea and manchester city at stanford bridge a really top class game between two sides going for it it was full of action the man shot us into the wall and we've got Manchester United hosting Aston Villa, a game that, trust me, you don't want to miss for this fantastic finale. Still Tellis. Out of the way by Ingalls. Van der Beek. Have a header back to Tellis again. Bruno Fernandes is unmarked in the area. Into Rashford! Plus, we'll also bring you all the goals from all this week's games. But first, we start at Stamford Bridge. Recent times, Manchester City have been able to walk the Premier League, but in this time, they haven't quite been able to find their feet. Chelsea are also a side that they're just about finding their challenges, so it looked to be an evenly matched game. It really was a battle of the Blues down in West London. Your commentator for this one is Trevor Gubber. Chelsea in midweek beat Aston Villa by three goals to one while Man City drew 2 2 with Everton. Chelsea fifth heading into this game, a point behind today's opponents, Man City, who are third and just three points behind leaders, Liverpool. Fran Lampard's men will be looking to build on their winning midweek. I've gone with a familiar looking side with Werner, Abraham, Usunodoy and Mount the front four, Rudiger and Theodore Silva partner each other in central defence. As for Man City and Pep Guardiola, they were looking to get back to winning ways after a draw in midweek. Aguero, Bernardo Silva and Sterling provide the, looking to provide the goals. De Bruyne, Fernandino and Foden looking to support from midfield. My Dean is a referee. Here's Chilwell. On to Werner. On towards Tammy Abraham, but John Stones is there to collect. And Stones will clear up to Werner. And give possession back to Chelsea. Abraham's to his man Abraham. Shot saved. By Edison. Stones fell to a goal there. Stones gave the ball away. Werner into Abraham. Stones falls to the ground. Which gave Abraham a strike on goal. Saved by Edison as we see that. Comfortably saved by the City stopper. Kyle Walker, down line for Foden, Fernandinho, our widest towards Bernardo Silva, which he will collect on to Mason Mount, up to Abraham, tried by Stones, now Ake, forward for Bernardo, Foden trying to go on and then does, to Bernardo Silva, cross field pass to Aim Sterling, Fernandinho, Sterling once more, Fernandinho once more, still going for Fernandinho, goes down inside the box, it's a penalty to Chelsea, penalty against Chelsea should I say, fired by Rudiger, as you can hear some fireworks going off in the background, happy new year to everybody, people still have fireworks, just round the ground actually, I can see him over 
Edemy from the comms box as Fernandino was definitely foul there. De Bruyne will take against Mendy. De Bruyne is saved by Mendy. Wonderful stop down into his left. Let's keep it out by Edward Mendy who makes a fantastic stop. I'm not sure if he came off the line. But still, yes, he came off the line before he was struck. If had VAR, that would have been retaken. But we don't. And he's not. And he's still goalless. Abraham. All right, first Pulicueta. Lovely crossing towards Werner. There could be fireworks flying off here today. It's the start of a brand new year. 2021 is the year. And Aguero's away from Manchester City. And fires over the ball. Good ball forward to find Aguero from the City defence. Long ball over the top. His strike was over. Only pressure from Jorginho to put him off there. Mount. Can't go. The possession is below the comes forward. Fulham on a yellow card. Fernandinho. De Bruyne. Ronaldo Silva. Fulham went down off the ball there on the challenge from Kovacic. Ronaldo Silva. Fernandinho, Kyle Walker. Still going to Kyle Walker. We lifts the ball in, headed away. Looking for Aguero in there. Goes out to Bernardo Silva. Fernandinho, Aguero turns. Aguero shoots, saved by Bernard Mendy. Aguero and Mendy. And then, Man and then Rudy go, will help get the ball clear for Chelsea. But good pressure list for Man City. Bernardo Silva working it well. With Foden and Sterling into Aguero, fired. We say, I think Sterling could have been a bit quicker there. Could have been put pressure on Edward Mendes. That shot came in, but obviously he didn't, as he as Mendy made that fantastic service. Just come forward now with Chilwell. Love the footwork. Involving Thiago Silva. Chilwell still going with the ball in towards Abraham Stones. Heads out to Chilwell now. Mount pressure building for Chelsea now. Then into Mount. Mount shot takes the fraction and goes in. Chelsea tell the lead. Here at Stamford Bridge. And just listen to that noise. Chelsea, who had a point lead over Man City heading into this game, has just extended even further. If he stays like this, Werner, Kovacic, Sinodoy, Erdogan, all joining in the celebrations. There's a cross from Chilwell, which was clear by Stones. Works his way back to Mount, who shot took a deflection off his Stones, I think. And one from Tim Edison. We'll see you from this angle. Werner into Mount, who will strike. It's John Stones' leg and wrong foot. Edward Mend. Run for Edison in the Man City goal there. 1 0. Chelsea lead. Sterling. De Bruyne. Man City have to try and get back into this in the auto to try and overtake. Keep that lead advantage clear of Chelsea and keep and put pressure on Liverpool by winning here. Abraham. Shot is blocked. Comes out to Mount. That's Pilaqueta. Ball crossed in. He's headed away by Ake. This one is as Pilaqueta. And towards Mount on the edge of the penalty area. Loses out to Fernandinho. Who's reduced to a foul against the Mount there. We've got it to Mike Dean. And once the booking for Fernandinho, Mike Dean says, I saw this. I think he's just a talking to for me. And let's see what I think. Should they be booked here? No, I think he... I think Madden got that spot on there. Great decision. Mount. Sends over this. And Mount shot. is into the wall. Which is doing a very good job there. And then back to Mount and Edison. Which is a ball clear. Stones helps it clear. Pressure still not there to Jet. This is Mason Mount's free kick. Up off the wall. Back to him. Chest down, nearly off volley. Struck towards goal and go right, good right hand to that to palm it away. Chilwell. 
Moves out to Furman. Chilwell gets it back. Werner. Chilwell again. What can Chilwell do here? And lift a crossing towards Abraham. Gets it towards goal. And into the back of the net. Tommy Abraham has doubled Chelsea's lead. And just now the first. Listen to that noise which has come from the Chelsea fans today. Listen. Rudigus and Thiago certainly enjoy that one. Chilwell, a little bit of pressure. A wonderful ball there. Nelson Dove was in there as well. But Kim, Abraham has Zinchenko and Walker on him. Walker out of position, by the way. And he got up above Walker. Let's cover for Sinchenko, incidentally. And couldn't cover quite well as I'm just stressing a two goal lead. 36 minutes gone here at Stanford Bridge. John Stones. Been a good game so far, really enjoying this one. Hopefully, you guys are as well as Sinchenko comes forward. Full City. On to Aguero. That is Inchenko, Oliver Zinchenko. Kevin De Bruyne. Raheem Sterling. De Bruyne once more. Furling. Fernandinho back to go. Turns. Fernandinho's got one back. And we could have a game on here now. Fernandinho has scored for Manchester City. Wonderful, wonderful strike. De Bruyne, Foden, Aguero all involved. A little bit of the blood build up and it was still into Foden, on to Fernandinho. And turned away from Kovacic and then just bent a shot beyond Mendy. We saw a label come react and Manchester City have one back. Chelsea two, Man City one. Rudiger. Um, Tim is going to second half, still 2 1. On towards De Bruyne. And now that ball's down the line. Cut out. Fernandino, the Manchester City goal scorer. On to Bernardo Silva. He's got Fulham coming up on the outside of him if he decides to do what he does. At Bernardo Silva and back to Fulham again if he can get away from Chilwell. His England teammate is Campbell, who crosses. Saved easily and claimed easily by Edward Mendy. A signer from Wren. There's Hudson Adoy. Into Jorginho. Mount there from Aspilicueta's nice pass. Jorginho once more up to Abraham. Aspilicueta nice on the booking as well. From his forward. Mount. Aspilicueta. Nice Hudson Adoy. Aspilicueta. Nice now, just building a bit of momentum at the start of the second half. That's Pelicueta. Our mark gone. On their about, it's 2 1 Chelsea. Here is Stanford Bridges, Kovacic. Abraham! Just over. Tell me, Abraham, uh, it's just over the bar there. I really should have kept that shot down, and if he had it, I know it probably caused problems. Edison. I think he would have caused problems for Edison. Might have even ended up in that top corner. As it stands, Man City still have a chance to get back in this as Walker comes forward now. Another silver back to Kyle Walker. Walker inside the box, lose lost style there. And now Chelsea can break. Hudson Odoi, end to end stuff here now, just as we like it. Here on Trevor Sports, here bro. To Werner, love the one from Werner, what can he do here now? Timo Werner, Ben Chilwell. Wonderful run from Chilwell. What can he do here now? Werner. Kovacic. Mount. Kovacic. Free kick for Chelsea. Kovacic decided against taking that quickly there. It was a foul by Fernandinho. The Manchester goal scorer on Mount. Mount's there. Kovacic is there. And it will be Mount to take. 
what this amount has just produced. An absolute pure genius of a free kick to extend Chelsea's lead to 3 1. So, each other, Mossin, if you're listening, each of those layers again. Absolute pure genius of a free kick. Top corner, postage stamp. Thank you very much. Pick that out, Edison. And that's what we'll have to do. Chelsea leads 3 1. Mason over the superb free kick. Jorginho. What can he do now, Jorginho? As Piliqueta. Coming forward, as Piliqueta. Kovacic. Mount. Let's go over the superb free kick. Let's go. Mount again. And Mount has been tackled by Fernandinho. Let's see to go. Let's go there, I think it is. It was by Walker this time, and I didn't have a word with him. He says, No more, son. Otherwise, you're heading into the book. And I think he's quite right in saying that after some of the challenges he's done this, in this game and go away with. Now I'm looking to produce another one again as Hudson Odoi is replaced by Ziyech. Mount off the wall and towards Werner and at the way. And there goes a full time whistle. Chelsea 3. Mount is the one. Mount with a brace. And we said Abraham strikes 24 and 67 for Mount. Abraham on 36. And we do know putting one back off the nominees. But I must say, it's a fantastic game to commentate on. First, I actually watch Chelsea go above Man City in the lead or fail to close the gap on leaders Liverpool and go level on points with them. Chelsea will be the happier of the two sides, and so will Friend Lampard. It's finished here at Stamford Bridge. Chelsea 3, Man City 1. In the end, a fantastic win for Chelsea. Really good for them. Dense Manchester City's title challenge. But is there going to be a, a Pep Guardiola reshuffle? The January transfer window looks to be Manchester City's best bet, probably, to get back into the championship title race. Manchester United, though, have found themselves in a title race. Just a point behind Liverpool in a big game against Aston Villa. This was really crucial for them. They knew they had to win. But there's one thing we know about Aston Villa this season the match today, as they always produce the most astonishing games. Your commentator for this one is Trevor Davis. Manchester United and Aston Villa were the two top contenders the very first Premier League season all the way back in 92-93. Today is a story of contrasting situations changing. Aston Villa surviving Premier League. Fate by that of a VAR decision are through and thriving in the season. Manchester United are continuing to progress under the advancement of their former player and now current manager, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. But for tonight, this is a big chance for Aston Villa to show that they can mix it with the big boys. But with Liverpool's dominant win earlier on today, Manchester United know that they must win to keep pace with their most fiercest of rivals. It's turning out to be a classic championship battle and Manchester United know after recent events they need to win here to keep up the pace. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer today goes with the preferred lineup, perhaps but Paul Pogba and Mason Greenwood make to the bench. Alex Tellers comes in at left back. Martial was preferred for, God, preferred for Cavani in the centre forward position. Aston Villa and Dean Smith today. No real changes for him. El Ghazi's partnering in the middle along with John McGinn and Russ Bartley. Bernard Troyorio starts with Ollie Watkins and Jack Grealish leaving the line. Well, it's been a very good uh, season for Jack Grealish and for that of Ollie Watkins. For Aston Villa, they've been the two players that really shone this target. So far as Aston Villa, they've probably had. They probably look a bit more comfortable. They probably uh, add a little bit more of the way, but they look more comfortable when they do have possession. And they've won a free kick. 10, 15 yards inside the Manchester United half. And the bait with his second foul. I'm sure that'll be just something that uh, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer will be just keeping his eye on. He's on Triore again. Hoping not to go in the referee's book. Perhaps he's told next time he does that he might. Begin again to use the left foot. Again towards Grealish. Tomine gets it away only as far as target. Target's cross is blocked by Wambisaka. Wambisaka's unable to clear it. Early ball into the area. Here comes to Traore. It'll come to Watkins. Van der Beek is there and that's a good bit of defending. 
Martial tries to flick it on. Aston Villa making a positive start, but Tomane has one possession back. Anthony Martial, Rashford, Bruno Fernandes, Tomane. Very good layoff that. Juan Bissaka. He's forced to come inside. Clever pass into Martial. It was brought down right on the edge of the area. Mings will protest his innocence. It's El Ghazi. This is uh, set up perfectly for Bruno Fernandes. We know what he is uh, like from set pieces. Indeed. I have a goal in the cup final, but this is too far out. Or was he going to flick one over the wall? I'm not sure about the goalkeeper's position. And that's why... Bruno Fernandes gives Manchester United the lead. And perhaps the goalkeeper's positioning there in the Aston Villa goal needed looking at. There was one option to flick it over the wall and Martinez was too far over to his right. And in truth, for a player of Bruno Fernandes' quality, that was a bit of a gift. Away. Watkins collided with McTominay. Garcia into Grealish. Watkins. Traore. Wire is across. Here's Aaron Wambisaka. Lindelof. Good to Bruno Fernandes. Tellez. Still Tellez. By Ingels, Van der Beek, clever header back to Tellez again. Bruno Fernandes is unmarked in the area. Into Rashford! And their header is directed downwards. In truth, was never going to worry Martinez. Very good run, mind you. Martial moving down the line. Back to Wambi Saka again. And back to Martial. The uh, great force Manchester United's way. This is Van der Beek. No foul given. McGinn. Long clearance looking for Watkins, who does well to control it. Triore. El Ghazi. Target. Again, and McTominay reads it. Rashford. Martial. Rashford again. What a great pass through to Martial. Does he have what it takes to get us target? He's played in Bruno Fernandes. 2-0. Bruno that is a textbook Manchester United counter-attack. Bruno Fernandes has his second going to get his very first Manchester United hat-trick. Ten minutes to go to half-time and United have done it on the counter-attack. Great work between Rashford and Martial. Martial's unselfish lay after Bruno Fernandes. Still a lot to do. Surrounded by Engels. Chased down by target. First touch takes it away from the defender. While slipping is able to finish it past Martinez about an impact player for the Red Devils the theatre of dreams Bruno Fernandes has made it two and a bank Tominator Freds rotation <laughs> skill by Fred flick them all the way high ball looking towards Martial target is there prevents the corner at the expense of a throw in He's going to replace Traore. He struggled today. And a bait. Misaka into McTominay. Bruno Fernandes. 
you know, remind you, is on a hat trick. Fred's little pass into Fernandez. Oh, Van der Beek lets fly! And that was very close. Van der Beek, after a lovely little interchange between Fred and Bruno Fernandez, went fly and Martin has just tipped that away. able to uh, win the ball back. We come. Let's target. Barkley. Watkins. Clever ball to Grealish. Good strength shown by Jack Grealish. Watkins! Good save! Well, that was an excellent save, point blank, from David De Gea. This is the first time Aston Villa have had room in the Manchester United area. Goalkeeper is there. Oh, Gilbert's touch just eluded him, which is a shame. It's a delightful ball by uh, Jack Grealish. His target. Drum again. El Ghazi. Again. Gilbert. McGinn into El Ghazi. Barkley. Grealish. McGinn. El Ghazi. Barkley to target. Target's ball. Watkins! 2-1! And it's been coming. Aston Villa have really put the pressure on a Manchester United have sat back. And Ollie Watkins gets Aston Villa back in the game. Oh, here it was. This was the key moment. Across with real venom. Harry Maguire did not deal with it. Ollie Watkins showed us his composure. Chest it down and with the left foot beats David De Gea. This is very much game on now. Dominate. Here's Greedish. Great ball into Watkins. Good challenge by Fred. 100% to the football. Fred, I think, for Manchester United has had a very fine game at defensive midfielder's position for him. Fizzige, Watkins, Grealish, Watkins, Grealish again, Barkley, Fizzige, Watkins, Grealish, Lindelof is across. Oh, Lindelof is out of position. Grealish is playing in. Ollie Watkins for Aston Villa. And there is Harry Maguire. But it's a poor clearance. Trezeguet 2 2. Oh, it's suicidal defending. It really is. And Mohamed Trezeguet has leveled it for Aston Villa with 15 minutes to go. Disastrous defending. When Watkins was through, Maguire did fantastically well to win the ball back. The clearance was quite frankly dreadful. There to take the chances was Trezeguet. This was it. Brilliant bit of defending here. A panicky clearance. A pretty poor one. And an easy finish in the end for Trezeguet. Manchester United stunned in their ability to, res to respond to their rivals in Liverpool they've been pegged back from 2-0 up Aston Villa are showing their brilliance again Fred collision which falls favour of Aston Villa and allows them to retain possession through the middle here's Watkins and Lindelof and Watkins again and Lindelof again his target. Oh, penalty! A penalty has been awarded! 
got to have been the challenge between Lindelof and Lana Watkins. The two were tangling for the ball. Oh, it was McTominay that caught Watkins just as the ball was cleared. So Jack Grealish with the chance to give Aston Villa the lead and completes a stunning comeback. Oh, brilliant save by David De Gea. Jack Grealish denied. It was his moment. And Manchester United have held on. Well, Aston Villa, in my opinion, are incredibly unlucky not to have a famous win this evening at Old Trafford. Manchester United are lucky to escape with a draw. The first half in which they looked incredibly comfortable. A second half in which Aston Villa took control and put all the pressure on. In the end, David De Gea, the hero, saving Jack Grealish's penalty. And full time at Old Trafford is Manchester United 2, Aston Villa 2. Well, David De Gea, the hero, saving Jack Grealish's penalty and effectively keeping Manchester United's unbeaten home record intact as a result. Really important moment, but it just shows us the quality that Aston Villa have and uh, uh, definitely that of Jack Grealish. He was excellent. Right, now it's time for a round-up of all the other goals played on this week's uh, um, round of Premier League fixtures brought to you by Trevor Sinstat. Liverpool showed their title credentials by bouncing back after the defeat at Newcastle by absolutely trouncing Southampton at St Mary's. But it was Southampton that gave Liverpool the great start. Bedanak's horrible clearance ended up in the back of his own net, a disastrous own goal that really set the tone for a day in which Liverpool were thoroughly dominant. Liverpool continued to create chances almost it seems at will. Alex McCarthy was very busy in the goal. A Goal mouth scramble, which was a fitting that of an FA Cup third run, eventually resulted in Robert Firmino being able to tap home, even though the goalkeeper again got something to it. Whatever happened, it just purely wasn't Southampton's day. Two for it became three very shortly in a first half in which Liverpool blew their opponents away. Andy Robertson's cross was met by Sadio Mane quite comfortably, and Liverpool forward scoring again. St Mary's having to applaud the quality of the side that, that, that they were facing. Liverpool were able to get a fourth goal in the start of the second half. A lovely interception by Alexander Runnels. Played in an opportunity for Sadio Mane to finish quite acutely. A lovely finish and chip over the goalkeeper that stood no chance of it. Liverpool running away with it and back with their advantage. 4-0 winners. Tottenham Hotspur knew that Leeds United would be no pushovers, but with Leeds United's high line, Jose Mourinho's counter-attacking side might be able to grab themselves the advantage. And they did. Harry Winks interchanging with Harry Kane, and it was Winks that was put in the goal. Melier came out, but could get nowhere near the effort. A poor defensive goal, it has to be said, on the behalf of Leeds United. But Tottenham will be absolutely delighted with that, as they look to refer themselves as challengers for this season. Tottenham were able to continue to make chances in the game and it was Leeds United's high line that was causing other problems. Sergio Rio found himself in acres of space on the right wing. His effort was just a fraction wide of the post. From set pieces as well, Tottenham found a lot of joy. A header by Dombele was well tipped away by Millier who had a very fine game in the Leeds United goal. But Leeds themselves were able to create chances. The only problem was they were leaving themselves exposed on the counter-attack. A wonderful ball thrown Song Yongmin that found himself through. Millier went out to cut the angle. Son showed us his quality. An absolutely delightful chip that put Tottenham Hotspur two goals up. Leeds United's high line being punished in the Premier League. But Leeds were able to get themselves back in the game as uh, Tottenham started to momentarily sit back. Three minutes after scoring, Leeds United got one back. Jack Harrison's low driving effort was no match to that in the goal of Hugo Lloris and Leeds United had one back. And then started a progress of Tottenham looking nervy and trying to sit back and trying to counter when they could. This cross and header by Steven Bergwijn just showed you that in the Tottenham camp all is quite, not quite right. Leeds United continued to move forward with pace and chances. Jack Harrison found Alioski who played a wonderful ball through to Klitsch and he was brought down. A penalty awarded. No complaints, it has to be said, from the Tottenham players. Up stepped Patrick Bamford, but this time the French national goalkeeper was more than a match, saving the ball and palming it away. But that wasn't all the chances the Leeds were to create towards the end of the match. Rodrigo's header flying over the bar after Klitsch's free kick. That was it in terms of chances. The Tottenham Hotspur held on for the win. Leeds United beaten away, but at least Spurs keep themselves in contention. 
Everton and West Ham United played out a fantastic game and the end uh, in a rather foggy conditions down at Merseyside. But it was West Ham United that got things going quite brilliantly. Paolo Fornells taking on the excellent control by Sebastian Haller and finishing quite brilliantly past Pickford. And West Ham were able to double their lead very shortly forward. Aaron Cressel's free kick into Haller, his lovely little flip fired side Bedrama and a brilliant finish to put the Hammers 2-0 up at Goodison Park. So, what does this Everton side do? Why, they fight their way back into the match. And in the second half of the first half, that's exactly what they did. An interchange by Dominic Calvert-Lewin and Hamas Rodriguez allowed Everton to get one back. And that was the spark that started an Everton onslaught on the West Ham goal. The equaliser arrived shortly afterwards. Pass out wide to Luke Digne. Dominic Calvert-Lewin brought the goalkeeper into no man's land. And Hamas Rodriguez was left with the opportunity to tap home from an open net. Turned out to be the only mistake Fabianski made all game and it cost his side three points. But he more than redeemed himself from an effort in which he saved the point which West Ham had. With Charleston's header just flying wide at the post. As the game continued on, the chances kept flowing. Tom Davis that got the winner the other week, his effort was well saved by Fabianski. And it was Everton that continued to pile on the pressure again. Gilfie Signison this time playing in Luca Digne and an absolutely fantastic save by Fabianski from point blank range. And as the chances continued towards the end of the match, Everton continued to break down their West Ham defence at will. But they couldn't find a way by Fabianski. Allen's pass found Dominic Calvert-Lewin. And on the rare occasion Everton were through, the striker's shooting boots were missing. It was a 2 all draw, a fair result probably in the end considering how well West Ham started the game. But a great comeback by Everton. Good match this. Newcastle United were buoyed after their win over the league champions last time that we were here on Trevor Sports but it wasn't such a case today in fact they were well beaten by by Leicester City despite the scoreline an early cross headed in by Harvey Barnes was a fantastic start for Leicester James Madison's free kick was well set over by Martin Dubravka, who was turning out to be perhaps Newcastle United's best player of the season. But from a side that's found themselves in the top half of the table, they did show that they have some qualities. Alan Sam Maxim's ball here through to Callum Wilson and started off an excellent counter attack for Newcastle United. Almiron found himself through, but Christian Fuchs hesitated. Almiron finished it in the near post. A goal back and an equaliser for Newcastle United. But despite the scoreline, it was all Leicester City really in the game. Jamie Vardy was found a joy out on that right wing and his cross was met in the end by the head of that to James Madison. Sadly, the radar was off. The Braco's frustration sowed as the chances continued to come and time and time again, Jamie Vardy heading wide at the far post. But there was to be a winning goal in the end for Leicester City. Justin's cross was met in the end by Harvey Barnes at the far post. Four defensive work by Manquillo allowed Barnes again to finish home and win the game for Leicester City. It was more relief than celebration of winning it, a game which Leicester City should have won by many more than that in truth in the third minute of the stoppage time. It was the Foxes that took all three points. Fulham would desperately need of a good performance after increasing pressure faced on them this season and they got it away to Burnley, a side which just seemed to not be quite at the races, perhaps a little too much Christmas celebration. Decoy Reeve was able to sit there and stroke home from a short amount of distance time in a game in which Fulham completely outplayed Burnley to be fair, Mitrovic having this long range strike which is just tipped over by Nick Pope. Chances continued to happen for Fulham and they continued to almost break down the Burnley defence at will. The pass by Aaron Knockhart was just tipped away by Nick Pope who did, uh, have to say, had a very good game. Burnley were able to create chances and when they did, it wasn't quite there. Chris Woods header hitting the post and then Chris Woods left footed shot being cleared off the line. But in the end, Fulham were able to get the second goal and are able to seal all three points. And it was a bit of disastrous defending, truth be be told. Aaron Knockhart was through, he passed across to Reed again and his little topo roll home. I bet you wish Burnley fans that this game remained postponed but in the world of Trevor Sports it was a 2-0 win to Fulham, comfortable one in the end, they were fast the better side. If Fulham can find this form against their relegation rivals they might just have a chance of staying up and that's this what Scott Parker said at Turf Moor, it was Burnley nil, Fulham 2.
After that defeat, Brighton knew that they had to pick up the reins to keep close with Fulham. But they placed a Wolverhampton Wanderers cyber intent on having a very good game themselves. But it's just a case of could Wolverhampton Wanderers find the consistency needed. Well, they've got Raul Jimenez, but his near post effort was well tipped away by Matthew Ryan. Who in truth didn't have the best of games after that save. Johnny Castro's long ball in the end found Jimenez. Jimenez was through. A cross goal. Nobody reading it. Frustrating for the centre forwards. But there was a goal in the end for Wolverhampton Wanderers. A Ruben Nevers free kick. Fired in. Matthew Ryan in the goal. Left rooted to the spot. Could do nothing for that. Wolves then were able to go ahead and seal all three points by getting the second. Jimenez is ball into Daniel Potence. His first touch was excellent. His second was cool, calm and collected. 2-0 to Wolverhampton Wanderers. A big win for them. Frustrations for Brighton because there is now a gap between them and Fulham in the relegation zone. For Wolverhampton Wanderers, it keeps them going. Perhaps they can recover, discover their form of last season. Crystal Palace have been a side that were in desperate need of a win and they faced a Sheffield United side at the moment that were just lacking in form after their recent early, uh, early good start. Christian Benteke's header showed us where they were. And it was a game in which Sheffield United continued to create chance after chance. But Crystal Palace held on. Mike Hodgson's side is made of tougher stuff. In fact, they do have the highest average age of any side in their Premier League. And having that inner belief was certainly an occasion, particularly that of Vincent Gator, who made three quick saves and really kept Crystal Palace in the game. Chances continued to flow in the end, but it was from this fantastic counter-attack in the end that Crystal Palace were able to break the lead. And this goal by Wilfred Zahar picks the ball up inside his own area, the pace to get past Stevens, the pace to charge into the area, and the quality of finish on the angle was far too much for that of Areola. A quite brilliant goal, it has to be said, by Wilfred Zahar, who really is starting to look like the player that he promised to be when he had the ill-fated move to Manchester United. Palace were able to get the second and seal all three points for them. Kuyate's ball found Patrick van Aanholt, played a clever pass into Mitzi Batshuayi, but Bashwai was given far too much time by the Sheffield United defenders, picked his spot and scored quite brilliantly. A 2-0 win to Crystal Palace does wonders for them in their relegation dogfight down in South London. Sheffield United are in danger of joining them in the dogfight. It was 2-0 down in South London. West Bromwich Albion and Arsenal probably played out the poorest game of the day. There were chances for both sides, but the game really lacked a lot of quality. Mattis Piera's effort eventually found Charlie Austin, and it was that effort that struck the post. It was as close as we came to a goal. Whilst it still remained nil-nil, there were always chances, and Kieran Tierney looked to be the one Arsenal player that tried to force the game. But in the end, the one chance he did have, he forced his effort wide. There was in the end chances for Ashley Maiden Niles. A very good cross by Tierney, but Maiden Niles headed it over. But there was time for late drama, and there was a great chance. Jake Livermore's corner cross was met in by that of Matias Pereira, who flicked his chance wide. That was it. That was as good as the game got. 0 0 between West Brom and Arsenal. Well, here are all the results of match day 17 of the Premier League. It's a game in which there was only one side to get beyond this two, the. Uh, Two sides, in fact, to get beyond the two-goal mark. Chelsea's 3-1 win and Liverpool's 4-0 win. Some really good two-all draws between Everton, West Ham, Man United and Aston Villa to speak with. 2-0 was the win away from home. Really good wins for Wolves and Fulham um, in that matter. Poor results has to be said from uh, uh, perhaps West Brom and Arsenal. Bottom half of the table, there's now a gap between Fulham and Brighton. West Brom are in the relegation zone. So I'll them after that 4-0 defeat find themselves teetering on the brink of the relegation zone. Crystal Palace will be delighted for that win and West Ham for that point that moves them up. Sheffield United in danger of falling down into the relegation scrap. As for Arsenal, things might have to change for them, change for them rather quickly. Top half of the table, it's a four-point lead for Liverpool once again restored. That's back to where we were before Christmas. Manchester United lead the best of the rest. Joint points in that with Tottenham Hotspur. Just uh, three goals in the goal difference making the difference. And that of Chelsea that are also in fourth place. Manchester City fall down to fifth and Leicester are starting to catch them. Just behind the point behind them in sixth place. Then you're down to the teams in the 20s. Leeds, Newcastle, Everton and Aston Villa. have All been impressive this season. Well, next for us on Trevor Sports, join us for a special Friday edition where we've got the FA Cup third round draw live from Wembley Stadium. 
where we will be going ahead and uh, giving you all the 32 sides that will be playing the in the third round of the Trevor Sports Emirates FA Cup this season. Then join us for Sports Night midweek following that. Our main game will be Leicester City versus Chelsea, plus all the goals and highlights from all the other games to play ahead from there. And join us for the big one two weeks from today. Liverpool versus Manchester United. It took to be a real top of the table clash between those two. We're also going to bring you the game between Wolves and West Brom. Well, it's been another fantastic episode of Match of the Day when there's been lots of action, fouls, furious action, and it turns out that the goalkeeper's the hero. Couldn't hit a penalty with a barn or with a banjo this week. From all of us, thank you very much, and we'll see you this Friday for the FA Cup for third round draw. Bye-bye.